Okay, it's back on. Okay. So as far as within the bill, the five point bill, the stipulations was this. Okay. To calm down tensions, as far as California, it will allow California to become a state. Number two, it would outlaw the slave trade in Washington, D.C., but still keep slavery uh, active there, just outlaw the trade. Uh, number three, it would strengthen the Fugitive Slave Act. So Ohio, for example, right? I'm going to bring this back up later because it relates to Robert Smalls after he escaped from the Confederacy. <coughs> and um, yeah, yeah, it, it, it relates to him. I'm going to bring it up later. But as far as uh, Ohio, the territory, for example, you know, they didn't make slavery. Uh, they didn't have slavery there in that territory. That's where John Brown was born at in 1800. But at the same time, as far as officially, they didn't have a law against it until 1841 to where, like, if you are an escaped slave and you make it to Ohio, you're immediately free. Now, as far as like this third portion, the third point of this bill, they had it to where, like, OK, the Fugitive Slave Act would be strengthened. So therefore, regardless of where you go, even if you go into any one of these territories, keep in mind, this is federal at this point. If you go into any one of these territories, you will automatically be sent back as a slave. So they, that was kind of like a, a middle ground thing. It's harsh. But in order to calm down the tensions, that was the third aspect. The fourth one was they made a, a delineated a boundary, a Texas boundary uh, in northern Texas and the western port, portion of Texas. The fifth point of this bill is that they would uh, it would allow Utah and New Mexico, and I think it's Utah that I didn't name, so that might be yeah, that's the ninth one, Utah. But it will it will allow Utah and New Mexico to finally become a territory or whatnot. <clears throat> so it was passed September twenty second, eighteen fifty. As far as in South Carolina, the state itself, they were extremely dissatisfied. So that's when you had this build up for people calling for the state the state to secede from the union. Now, the cooperationists were relatively more moderate, yet they openly still expressed that they would secede and they were definitely still for slavery, but they felt like it would be impractical, especially at that moment to succeed from the union because it would greatly cripple the state's economy and it might uh, kind of fuck up the alliance of southern states that still want slavery in existence and want slavery to still spread to these various territories at the time. Now, as far as the secessionists, they didn't give a damn. So... <coughs> In order to kind of deal with this, they kind of like, okay, it was like, okay, let's take a vote then. Let's have a convention, a, a, a convention held in, in February of uh, 1851. <coughs> uh, the co cooperationists wanted a like uh, a, 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 a vote made in October or whatnot of 1851. Uh, as far as the date of February of 1851 they couldn't agree as far as the cooperationists on a date for the convention but it was still made <coughs> uh, there was another guy that the state representatives ended up sending to the senate some dude by the name of Brown Barnes uh, Barneswell Rett R-H-E-T-T -T. so he ended up going to the senate or what not Fast forwarding, because there's a lot of niceties in this shit. You know what I'm saying? But fast forwarding, when October came, the vote was made. Ultimately, um, the secessionists ended up losing. Now, in between this, they had went on this, this real complex campaign where they tried to get these local organizations or whatever to persuade the people to vote in favor of um, separating <coughs> from the union, etc., and they had a newspaper, I think it's called the Southern Standard, to counter the Mercury newspaper or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Trying to like, I don't want to just say propaganda, but basically spread their views. But ultimately, they ended up losing. And the cooperationists, 
that's what they collectively returned. But those individuals ended up getting like 58% of the vote or something like that. And so this whole little, this whole little attempt to succeed from the union was crushed at that point. And it's mentioned, they used the word like, they used the word, what was it, chimero? Basically, like, it was, they felt like, a, a lot of people felt like it was like a fantasy. Like, they would never, even though people wanted slavery in existence, but as far as, like, just succeeding from the union, at this point in time, they feel like it was something that was not really going to happen. But even though, even though a lot of people sincerely wanted to, you know what I'm saying? Because of the history of it, like John C. Calhoun, for example, him resigning as vice president in 1832, just to have some shit like that happen. <laughs> so that that whole little issue was settled down. That's the con- that's the like the background context going on in South Carolina itself. Now going back to 1851, Robert Smalls. Okay, Robert Smalls is in Charleston, Carolina. Like I said, he started out doing labor work. His ma- his slave master got like a fifteen do- fifteen dollars. He got a dollar. He ended up working at a hotel, and then he ended up uh, working on ships. But he started off as like a rigger. It- actually, after the hotel gig he became a lamp lighter uh lighting up you know the 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 street lights basically and the streets that was light lit through gas and shit so after that that's when he started working as a a rigger on the ship uh actually a longshoreman then a rigger and then eventually he ended up uh steering ships he he ended up becoming a wheel man he had developed a love for the sea and whatnot and during this time, he was learning a lot of shit like the waterways and all of that because a lot of the duties. Well, I'll get to that in a second. So during this time, that's when he met his wife, a lady by the name of uh, Hannah Jones. She was about five years older than him. She had two kids already, one named Charlotte, another daughter named uh, Clara. He had met her and he married her in um, 1856, a day before Christmas, December 24th. The very next year, actually the next two years later, is when they had their first child. They had a, a daughter by the name of Elizabeth. Elizabeth. They named her Elizabeth Lydia Brown. Two years after that, actually three years after that, in 1861, keep it in mind, 1861 is when everything really starts as far as like his, his, his learning more of, well, him being assigned actually to uh, this ship called, this, this Confederate ship called the CSS Planter, but just to get like his, as far as his seeds out of the way. In 1861, that's when he had his first son. No, first, no, his second daughter. Her name was um, Sarah Voorhees. No, 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 his first son, his first son, Robert, Robert Smalls Jr. Yeah, he had him in 1861, but his son ended up dying two years later in 1863, and that's when he had his third child, which was a daughter. Her name was Sarah Voorhees, all right? Now, rewinding back, going back to 1861, now sometime in the fall of that year, that's when he was assigned to work on this ship, the CSS Planter. It was a Confederate ship or whatnot. Now, let me go ahead and say something else real quick, because my phone is at eight minutes, so I'm going to explain something to get this part out the way, too. As far as doing this, this this year, <coughs> when you know, following December, of course, of uh, eighteen sixty, when 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 South Carolina seceded uh, from the fucking Union or whatnot, and then in February, that's when they had the convention and, and elected Jefferson Davis as the head of the Confederacy or whatever, and all these other states followed suit: Alabama, Mississippi, etc. Blah blah blah. As far as like that military might at the time, it was noted how many ships they had in comparison to the Union. The Union had like 90 uh, ships, warships or whatnot, warships in total. The Confederacy only had 30. But based on what I read, only 14 of them was really worthy of the sea or whatever. So uh, in April, luckily for the Confederacy, okay, I got 40 some seconds. In April, luckily for the Confederacy, uh, the Union had a had, had a shipyard by the name of Goss Port, located in Virginia, a place called Portsmouth, Virginia. Because remember, Virginia also becomes a Confederate stronghold as far as in Richmond, Virginia, Virginia as well. But as far as like this uh, Navy yard, the Union, you know, I guess for like reconnaissance purposes, based on proximity, I'm assuming they ended up abandoning this Navy yard. But they didn't destroy all the equipment. And supplies. You had gun supplies. You had ammunition. You had uh, docks. 
docks that was there still, that was still operable. And then you had a warship by the name, one second, 